In today's economy, cash flow is tight and families are held captive to high interest rate credit card debt. Churchill Mortgage can restructure your current mortgage and significantly reduce these problems. Get a free analysis and learn how to eliminate credit card interest rates, lower bills, and start taking control of your budget. Get started at churchillmortgage.com. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLS Consumer Access Equal Housing Lender 1749 Mallory Lane Suite 100 Brentwood Tennessee 37027. Man, oh man, oh man. Yep, here we go again. Let's do this, 22. Just got back from doing a rations run, and uh, yeah, everybody in Delaware had to wear a mask again. Ain't that some sad stuff, boy? <laughs> oh, you can't make this up, man. It's like a boomerang, you know? We were on the road, man. We, we was there. I could see it. But then all of a sudden, it's like, you, you you ever read the Odyssey back in the day? I know a lot of you have because it was required reading or some of y'all are interested in myths like I am. But it's like we were there. Ithaca was there, baby. And then all of a sudden Poseidon said, no. And then this big wave came along and just pushed us right back over to where Troy is or so. And now we got to go ahead and do the voyage again. <laughs> oh, laugh at my pain. Laugh at my pain. No, it ain't in my pain. It's everybody's pain, man. This is some BS here. <laughs> Well, at least I was able to get the stuff that I needed, you know, like not like everything was sold out. You know what I mean? I still got plenty of toilet paper to go because you see, just because certain things start, you know, stop making water doesn't mean you stop making water. So you got to make sure you have that sewer paper, you know, to make your life a little easier. Of course, you know, in survival styles, they say, you know, you should use a pine cone to really get back in there and get like the exfoliating scrub to, you know, clean out your rectum. Anyway, I said too much. Let's get this whole thing started. Because, welcome to the J-Bet Show here on... J360 Radio! Come unwrap some holiday magic this season in Denver, where the lights are brighter and the shopping is grander. The shows are more spectacular, the trees taller, the festivities merrier. So come for your holiday traditions or make some new ones with your friends and family in the Mile High City, where the season feels a whole lot more wonderful. Discover great hotels and more things to do at milehighholidays.com. Waiting for mortgage rates to drop could be a costly mistake. Once rates drop, new home buyers will enter the market and prices will soar even higher. At Churchill Mortgage, you can get a free analysis and learn how to avoid the trap of waiting for interest rates to drop. Buy now and refi later at churchillmortgage.com. This is a paid advertisement. NMLS ID 1591. NMLS Consumer Access Equal Housing Lender 1749 Mallory Lane Suite 100 Brentwood Tennessee 37027. Hey, what's going on, J360 Legion? How are you all doing tonight here on episode 235 of the one that started it all, The Red Show, baby? Welcome to the J-Man Show. I'm J-Man, of course, and it is an honor to be back here with you all tonight, even though it is not Wednesday. It is definitely Thursday, but you know, I had free parking. Besides, we're doing an alternative schedule this week due to the restoration of J360Productions.com. So if any of you are listening from J360Productions.com, how's it going? What's up? Yeah, it turns out that if you look at the little sidebar on the right of your screen, I would like to say you actually can listen to every single J360 show live. Now, you will have to click the... You know, you will have to click the big giant um, play button. But the thing about it is, is that we don't want it to be like, you know, you come on the site, then all of a sudden you hear like a whole bunch of sounds roaring at you. I know some of y'all listen to Slayer right now. But the thing about it is, is this, as you go through your, you know, your custom soundtracks, which you cannot play on stream anymore due to varying reasons and poorly defined reasons, I might add. (laughs) I'm just going to go ahead and say this. You can chill out, listen to the J-Man show for a while. I mean, why not? After all, I've been doing this for damn near six years now, and I'm loving it, man. I'm loving it, you know? Uh, You know, some people ask me, you know, how long are you going to hold out for? And I'd like to say ever. I don't even think of four. I just think of ever, you know? 
kind of like my lady asking me, yeah, uh, like how long I'm gonna be around, or if any of her friends ask how long I'm gonna be around, ever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you stuck with me. But the thing about it is, I ain't a bad person to be stuck with, though. I'm pretty cool, keep to myself, do what I gotta do. The only time I ever get involved in some BS if it affects my livelihood, or, you know, once again, tries to make my life harder. But I'm strong, and I'm so strong enough that I can't hesitate to give society one good crack in the jaw for trying to make my life harder than what it is. And no, I'm not talking about the mask mandate. Even though, like I said, I was perfectly content with being able to use this stuff optionally, but I guess that's dead too. But you know, hey, it is what it is. But you gotta realize, even when the CDC had those original rules that somewhat made sense... People still went out and did whatever they want to do. I mean, if you ever want to see the practicings in the ways of I don't give a, get a good look at everybody from, you know, 2010 on up to here. Yeah, yeah. Let's go all the way back, man. Even though in the 2010s, at least then you could just run around, you know, and and, and not wear a mask and still be as stupid as can be. Nowadays, you got to do it behind the cloak. But, you know, it's interesting to me here folks like where we are as a people and you know the thing is the road to recovery is not impossible it is often paved with relapses but i never thought i'd see a whole damn macro large-scale giant relapse now that's wild (laughs) Uh, it's an ironic laugh folks it's not the laugh that you should be enjoying but you you just can't help it at this time a good friend of mine musifer said this you know you just can't help but laugh because this is the real world. It's above and beyond real. Mm-hmm. Stupid. <laughs> I agree with that, man. I'll be teaming up with him and Marco and Al again soon, I'd say. It'll probably be SOTA or probably the Hangouts, one of the two. Then again, why not go for both, gentlemen? Daily Double. Just letting you know if y'all listening out there. But yeah, like, I went right up in there, folks, and yes, the the scars of 2020 are coming back in full effect. Of course, there are some people that try to stay in the lobby and not have a mask on, you know what I mean? Try to sneak their way on and try to be like, man, I, I ain't gonna wear this throughout the whole whole moment, man. I'm gonna pull this off, you know what I mean? I do whatever I want to do. I don't care what the governor says. And then all of a sudden, you know, that's when you get all that crazy stuff happening again, where somebody probably be like, no, you go put your mask on. I'm staying right here till you do. Mm-hmm. Now, you guys seen these videos before, right? Where, you know, the crusader of the people will come up out of their woodwork and they'll go into somebody else's business who pretty much, at the same time, I don't see why you wouldn't because it's a social responsibility thing, but at the same time, you got to realize there are people that just don't care. And when they do this stuff, man, and they doom themselves, I know you think you're saving everybody, but here's the thing. What does J-Man always tell you? J-Man can't save everybody, Right? Yeah, you can't save everybody. And when you see somebody doing something like this, you get, you know, it's just like they, they, they stop caring as soon as they got in the parking lot. So, like, when I see people getting somebody else's face about that, about the mask and stuff, yeah, I'm like, you know, when you enter the threshold of pain, you got yourself to blame. Even though you're thinking you're doing right. I remember one time when I worked in retail, right, and I had my mask on and everything, but then this old woman kept trying to come up, trying to be like, uh, 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 like trying to point up like, like, like we in class or something. Like she trying to get my attention or something like that. And then she wanted to tell me about the correct way to put a mask on. And I'm like, I got my mask on, right? It's over my nose and my mouth. Mind your business. <laughs> See, I didn't really hesitate on being me at that point, folks. So, you know, it's like this. Like when I'm doing something and it ain't hurting you or concern you or, you know, I'm not hurting anybody else and making their life harder, leave me the hell alone. You ever think about that? Shoot. I'm not your son and I'm not your dog. Go F yourself. <laughs> Things like that. Shoot. Man, and I look at that old woman. I scared the hell out of her. I, I need to quit doing stuff like that. Uh, you know, as a very imposing individual, it gets like that sometimes. I'm sure some people that, you know, that were talking to me about jams, they hesitate on doing that stuff because of my um, abrasive personality. But needless to say, what are the four little little letters that tell me about myself? I don't give a damn. That stuff's BS anyway. Look, we're going to have a talk about the things that we hold true to ourselves. You know what I mean? Like the Migram Briggs and all that other crap. Like I said, there might be some accuracy to it, but it ain't truth, man. Water is wet, right? Shoot, you know, one if by land, two if by sea. 
And, 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 you know, living by this kind of crap. So what, you're a bigger a-hole than you have been? I look at people and they do that stuff. It's like, we well, see, Jay, I, I don't follow through on this because I'm an introvert. Ah, kiss my ass. That's what I say. And for those of you introverts out there that are mad, you know you're going to stuff it in. You know you're going to tell me about it. And as soon as I find out about it in the most passive-aggressive way, I'm going to ride you from here to the next show because I'm going to tell you why. Because that's not a that's not an answer. That's an excuse. People throw that crap up there in a minute. Talk about the introverts, extroverts, all this other stuff. Yes, mental health is a very important thing. But once again, you sold yourself out for a label. A lot of times, like I say, you know, when you're strong, you might be strong on Wednesday instead of Tuesday. You might be strong on Thursday instead of Friday. Hell, you know you ain't strong on Saturday because that's all y'all want to do is sleep. You live for two days any damn way. Why the hell would you even think about using the verts as a way to go ahead and justify your stupid behavior? You know what I mean? And I'm not saying this just to go at everybody. I know everybody's unique. Everybody's different. Everybody's special and boring as hell, but everybody's special. But yeah, I'm talking about those that go out here and showcase it. Like like we supposed to give a damn. Like like you out here selling bread. Or out here selling lemonade. Hard lemonade. You know what? If I drunk, boy, I tell you, I'd die from alcohol poison because of all the stupid stuff around here. And I don't drink like that. Nope. Now I'm still sticking it out with all these soft drinks and stuff now. But I mean, after a while, you'll realize it's true to form. But hey, guess what? <laughs> the one thing that keeps coming out of the woodwork, the one thing, no matter if there's a pandemic, no matter if things slow down, no matter if we go back into lockdown again, folks, no matter if we do. Hey, by the way, if we do, I will tell you this. J360 Productions will still be rolling on no matter what. I'm going to do what I can to go ahead and entertain y'all. If we ever have to go back into that, hopefully we don't. But like I said, just in case, you know, I'm letting y'all know. But, yeah, so, uh, mm. when it when get right down to that, folks, the one thing we never run out of is those that be practicing my narrative. Come out the woodwork, folks. I mean, like, and it's all part of the foolery. See, I can't call it by its given name because we're on the Jam Man Show tonight. And, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, after uh, 2.33, you know, I kind of had to roll it back. But like I'm saying, you know, like like my narrative just pops up everywhere. I think, uh, didn't somebody who hosts G4, <laughs> which, by the way, G4 is back, huh? And woke as can be, even though, you know, like in its latter days, it was it was getting pretty stupid. I mean, they had episodes of Cops on there, along with other things that had nothing to do with gaming. And then this particular person, what was her name, Fosk or something like that? Frosk or, yeah, yeah, whoever it is. <laughs> she over there uh, telling, telling the world about itself, talking about the toxic and discriminatory and all that other stuff, you know? She out there fighting the good fight for the women's uh, against the evil patriarchy. Because apparently, you know, even during a pandemic, sexual, sexual preference is evil. One outweighs the other. The other one will pummel the other one. Semantics is in full form. Nothing will be expressed right. And you know what the sad part about it is? This is modern gaming journalism. Like, she went on there, she gave this whole big hullabaloo speech. Like, you can look at it up on YouTube and all that jazz. Like, she went ahead and <laughs> decided to go ahead and explain all that. Even during a moment when it should be about Red Dead Online, right? And, and I'm like, what the hell is this? This is just as bad as when ESPN went really woke and decided to go ahead and explain. Well, not woke per se. It was there, but went too political where it started talking about Donald Trump and the way he goes about things. Yeah, I'll go that far. That's not your damn job. You know that? Sports is a feature. It's supposed to be soft news. It's supposed to be to get me away from politics from time to time. But no, I got to deal with, you know, the national anthem controversy. Everything's a controversy, too, so don't, don't, don't think that it isn't. And the sexism argument has been around for a while now. You know, there are women out there that have their own businesses. There are women out there that are trailblazers, that are doing a lot of great things. But there are also women out there, even though they've won, they still got to go ahead and try to knock down gentlemen out here that either A, want to get to know them, or B, want to do something similar to what they're doing. And last I checked, 
gaming is one of those institutions that should be for, if we can call it an institution, but gaming is one of those ways of life that should be for everybody. It shouldn't even matter if you're a girl or a boy or an unidentified uh, MF, you know? By the way, yeah, I may not cuss, but I can go ahead and use some acronym. And the acronym for, you know, my non-binary c- c- coven out there would be, you know, unidentifiable MFs. Don't worry about it. You know what you are, you jerk. <laughs> now, nah, I don't give a damn. And you see, the thing about not giving a damn is not that I hate you. It's just that I'm giving you equality. Equality means that everybody on the same page. Now, stop bitching. That's equality. Now... <laughs> And looking at all this stuff, I gotta say, modern gaming journalism has taught me one thing. One, nothing will ever be resolved. Two, stuff has gotten a lot more lamer since the magazines died out. I miss GamePro so much. I miss Sega Visions. I miss Nintendo Power when it was cool. I miss, um, mm, I guess Electronic Gaming, which is nothing more than the, um, Big Brother to GamePro, but still at the same time, I miss those things. The retro gaming magazine's doing good, though. <laughs> <laughs> you know, mm, beautiful magazine, beautiful magazine. But going back into uh, what I'm saying is, is that like gaming journalism has not been about gaming since 2014. And once again, you know, nobody wants any of that crap to rear its ugly head again, but it just did in that few moments. And I get it. Like a lot of people talk about not being treated fairly. A lot of people will talk about like the issues that take place in a corporate structure. You know, here's the thing about corporate America. Unless you're at the top of the pyramid, corporate America don't give a damn about you. And it's been that way for a long time. But then again, we can't just call it corporate America. We're just going to have to call it corporate earth. It's global, baby. That's the way it is. Like a lot of people talk about how uh, ridiculous China and their working conditions are. But guess what? You see, China is pretty much the workhorse for everybody. And they know it. And they demand it, man. And the truth is, is like, yeah. Unfortunately so. That's 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 where we are when it comes to macroeconomics and all that jazz. But you see, like, like the thing about it is we still do business with them. It's not like we're all going, oh, we're woefully independent. We make our own steel. We do all these things. And we made our own steel since the 40s. So, yeah, okay. There you go. Hey, you see, like, when going back into gaming journalism, it's like, you know, you're going to talk about the work condition, you're going to talk about the sexism, you're going to talk about all this stuff. I, I believe my good friend Marco talked about, like, how show business, you know, more or less is a thriving institution in some ways, but it has no HR at all. There's no human resource buff, there's none of that stuff. It, it is pretty much like anything goes in some cases. And he's right about that. And you see, as I do, like, the content creating here, a lot of people tell me, Jay, if you have such a problem with the way things are, why don't you stop? And it's like, why? Why would I give you all that satisfaction? I never said anything about me quitting, and I never said anything about the way, like, it's like fighting a giant tidal wave. It's going to go in that direction regardless of where it's going to go. Now, the thing is, if we all, you know, wherever the wind's blowing or how the wave works, if we go that other wave and we actually can do to the point where we all come together and we can be equal, that's fine. But that's in theory, though, because human nature takes place. It's kind of like when you have your whole setup and you have somebody in your group and you see the thing is that somebody in your group, they like being in the team and everything, but they have a desire and they have a need to go do something else or they want to break away from the group kind of like how michael broke away from his brothers to go and do you know around thriller time it's like you know at the end of that point it's like yeah break away to go do your own thing but you see everybody else is going to have some sort of resentment at that or but how, how dare you go get a solo career and all that kind of stuff because human nature takes place you see I mean, it's not to say that that person that has the other channel is going to do any harm to my channel. It's not. It is really not. I'm like, me on the other hand. It took me a while to get to this point, though. Because, like, you know, when you're younger, you know, you're full of fire and all that stuff. And you don't think that, you know, other people leaving is going to be starting something. You're you're, you're kind of afraid because you're trying to keep the house together. And you don't want things to break apart entirely. But then you realize that person has a desire and a need like you did because you broke away from a group. So it's like, yeah, you know, let let it let it continue. Let it continue and pay it forward. Why not? You probably need it. Go see those whole things. And the, and the thing about it is when you get to that point, 
that's equality because you want to see the people that were along with you. They might not be with you full time, but you want to see them win too. I said, just sitting there saying, yeah, I hope it all burns down in front of you. I hope you, su- I hope you fail. I hope all that stuff. See what I'm saying? But that, like I said, once again, that's growth as a person, which by the way, that's hard to come by too. Cause some people can't handle that. Not, you know, at all. Like that never happens. Like somebody saying something really off kilter on Twitter about four years ago, but how they are as a person now, because four years ago, probably going through something that was really, really, really dire straits. You know what I'm saying? Probably going through skid row, but now that they're actually financially healthy and wealthy and they're living their life better. And then you, on the other hand, you're butt hurt. You're looking for something against that person. So you dig it up on Twitter and hold it against them like that. You understand what I'm saying? You see, once again, people use my narrative or sexism to justify that kind of behavior. And you're not supposed to be digging up and doxing people in the first place. That's supposed to be illegal. But once again, you know, you can still city hall nowadays because people don't know how to hold anybody accountable for a damn thing. And uh, what would um, anonymity being a big thing on the internet? I mean, you know how the internet works. Like a bunch of all that is just all in the woodwork again. And see, like history repeats itself. Yeah, with Omicron floating around and being very, very fast with its uh, transmission. We're starting to feel those early days of COVID, right? And you see what would uh, Foss coming out speaking her point of view. And it might have been really important to her because she's probably been in the industry for a while. Seen a lot of stuff. And I guess that was just her time to soapbox. But needless to say, people will go ahead and speak about that. And then the thing is, sexism against women is terrible. But sexism against a man, it's unheard of. Discrimination against anybody is unheard of unless like you're of the fair sex or whatever. And I'm going to tell you this, the news networks are really responsible for this nonsense because, hey, if it bleeds, it reads, and they push this crap all the time. And then after a while, like I said, they love division. I mean, if anything was about good news, do you think that they would play this stuff? Do you think that they would actually showcase, like, you know, cities being rebuilt after a riot? I mean, they probably would on one of their lesser networks, or if you really pay attention, or maybe the local newspaper will do it because, hey, let's show some good in our community. But you see, when it comes to like national, global, all that kind of stuff, they don't want to show any good news like that. And even if they did, they probably wouldn't give it a long spot before the next drug commercial comes in and tells you, hey, all the ailments that you might have, but hey, if you take this miracle drug, you're going to be safe. Little crap like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like when you look at all this nonsense, it's BS. And then after a while, you got to really figure out like decipher, I should say. What side of the fence you're going to be on? I mean, if you're going to be a complete third party like Jay, man, just understand this. A lot of people will want you for their narrative, their agenda. So you got to know when to say no. Hell, say no to everybody and get a real clear picture. And be yourself, too, because guess what? When you start being yourself, you see how many friends float around you then. And for those of you that have been here with me on this whole damn voyage, probably annoyed with me in some regard, but still stay with me because you're true to the root. I respect you. But those of you that do that fair weather crap, oh, we ain't friends today. I don't expect to see you the day after. You understand? Little things like that. That's just real talk, man. And you see, like I said, gaming journalism has not been about gaming since 2014. And even then, it was iffy. And, like, with all this crap here, it gets in the way. I mean, they might as well have anything to talk about because I think, what is it? Like, isn't the PlayStation 5 shortage so bad now that Sony is actually making more PS4s? Which, by the way, are probably going to sit on the shelves because people are... The the 5 is out. You know what I mean? All the information, all the stuff about the 5 is out. Technically, this should be the part where, like, they start to remodel the five, right? At least for one first remodel or something. But the parts for that are short and gone. So I guess they're going to find a way to make some money. I mean, what happened to the TV division, right? Or like, you know, you got to ride this PlayStation 4 a little bit further. <laughs> Get all that stuff. But yeah, they don't have nothing new to go ahead and throw at us. But they got a bunch of tech demos. And they got that whole feature where you can actually click on some spot to go ahead and experience what the PlayStation 5 is like if you actually had one, which, by the way, that's just gaslighting. Like, deep down the inside, man, I look at this nonsense from time to time. 
I don't even know if I want to step into new age gaming. Not right now. I mean, I might get an Oculus and go hang out with Space Force or something. But I don't know about, like... By the way, hi, Space Force. Uh, <laughs> I might do that, but, like, it's just... It's, it's whatever. That's why I said Retro Gaming Magazine is great. But I look at, like, G4, and I'm amazed that G4 is back, but I see that G4 still has the same problem because, once again, they just hire these woke so-and-sos up here. You know, wokeness has no money in it. Matter of fact, a whole lot of um, industries are trying to reverse on their wokeness so they can get us back. You know what I'm saying? I look at it from time to time, I'm like, yeah, you learned a lesson, didn't you? All of a sudden, the pockets start getting dry, huh? Oh, uh, ain't no water in the hump anymore. <laughs> you dehydrated so-and-sos. That'll teach you, you sad sex. Of... Uh, you know, I, I told my lady I'd work on my uh, my behavior, but needless to say, you know, sometimes it take you there, boy. <laughs> Especially when you cover some of this crap that's floating about. But yeah, like like it's not even about games. Take it back to games. Take it back to what people cared about. I remember when they used to have a show called Game Makers, and they were talking about, like, you, you know, the Castlevania franchise, uh, Mega Man franchise, Street Fighter franchise. Street Fighter's about to turn 35, man. You know what I mean? Same age as me. That That's life. I need that. That's mother's milk, man. Yeah, speaking of which, uh, any of y'all on the power play and on that jazz, uh, y'all want to y'all play some Street Fighter? You, you know, let me know sometime. Hit, hit me up. We can do it on PlayStation 4 and, and Xbox. You just let me know. Yeah, we're going to make this happen. And you see, I'd like to say this. If I could talk to any of those game companies out there, they would be foolish to pl- pull the plug on, like, you know, the 8th generation of gaming because the ninth generation doesn't look really good right now. Matter of fact, it looks whack as F. And I just say this, like, you you, you got to go back to what's important. I don't give a damn about what the hell she's saying regarding, like, the circumstances that be. I never worked for NetherRealm Studios. But, you know, there's a chance I probably could. I mean, if they need a marketing guy or a specialist, you know, I'll be for it. If they need somebody to go ahead and run the ads for them, I'll be there for it. Among any of these other things. But I really don't give a darn about that stuff anymore because there's no resolution to it. Yeah, you can disrupt a company. Yeah, you can walk off a job. Yeah, you can do all those things. That you, Once again, this is you. Alright? And since you left that opportunity, I came and scooped it up and I made me a little extra money. Because, you know, hey, guess what? I'm holding it down. Now, before those of you be like, oh, gee, you're not about the cause? You're not about the cause? Let me tell you about your cause. Your cause changes every hour on the hour. It was about something, but it ain't about that anymore. Just like Black Lives Matter. Just like quite a lot of things. And Black Lives do matter. Hell, I am a Black Life, and I'm beautiful too. But the point is, is this. (laughs) A lot of that stuff changed down the pipeline when after, you know, the third riot or so. A lot of that changed down the pipeline, and more and more people were about it because they just wanted to go cause a lot of trouble. And it wasn't about those that died, and it wasn't about honoring them. It was about, hey, guess what? This is how much money I get. Take the money, and I go. Trust me, it was there. Okay? Among many things. And a lot of that stuff didn't get resolved at all. It's not even going to get resolved anyway. They don't hold people accountable for what happened on January 6th. We're still having talks about that, and people are just wiping their hands, walking away. Mm Mm-hmm. You look at some of these policymakers, these lobbyists and all that. They ain't doing a damn thing. Getting in the way. I mean, like, you look at Biden and stuff like that. Like, you can throw stuff at Biden if you want to, but, you know, in a way, him or whoever was going to take that office outside of, uh, you know, who... His name's Trump. Why am I doing that? You don't need no Harry Potter reference. Outside of Trump, they inherit what was left over. And what was left over was pretty much a cesspool. Yeah, drain the swamp indeed, but you find a crocodile. Almost, <laughs> almost did it. But yeah. So, like, you look at this stuff nowadays, and I see it. The mileage is showing. The mileage of ages right there, folks. You know? And it's just like, hey, I, I have a lot of hope for 2022. I mean, maybe it could be a nice restart button. But then again, was it 2021 supposed to be? And even then, we just, we, we didn't necessarily run fast with that. 
we we just you know skedaddled a little bit and 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 then like you know uh, stop go stop go stop go stop go. I think now since it's just January, we kind of cruising a little bit, but we gotta see what March looks like because that's the what the end of the first quarter. So we gotta see exactly how that go down and whether we stall or whatever. So you gotta make sure of that. Yeah, yeah. So like when I when I look at this stuff now, I I just I I have no choice but to laugh. I have to laugh. <laughs> you only get three of those. The point is, is that yeah, it, it, it's it's God, man. You know, just ridiculous. But like I said, I wonder why I, I should have put in my application at G four. They would have loved my ass. I mean, like man. I can see it now. Some of them feminists, just like, you know, the ones I met back in 2015, said, you just don't give a damn. And I'd be like, right you are. Because your plight is stupid. You can't just, you can't, let me just say this. And I said this to my mom a long time ago when she tried to compare me and my sister at one time. Because, you know, that was actually crucial advice. But I told her this straight up. I said, look, mom, love you dearly. I don't know why you keep trying to put my stuff on hold or try to put my stuff on a second shelf. But let me just say this. You can't praise one child and damn the other one. All right? You want to be a great parent? You want to be seen as, you know, a decent person? You got to praise both of us up. And even then, I ain't looking for your praise anymore. I ran a successful radio station, and I'm doing a damn fine job under your nose. And needless to say, she couldn't get at me at the time because I was across the room. Because, like I said, you don't do that stuff unless you are really, really tired of stuff. Or you just uh, just want to lose a couple of your teeth. But, yeah, I said that. And I meant what I said. You know, because that was my uh, moment to say it. And, like, you know, deep down on the inside, people forget, you know? Like, we live, like, you got to realize this. We, I am one person, Okay. Usually there's like, what, over 4.5 billion people in the United States? And then above and beyond across the world, because overpopulation is a thing. But you got to figure that most of those other people out there, they do what they want to do because they don't care. And not only that, they, they, they see a lot of freedom and ignorance. You can use 1984 principles for this. Or they follow the narrative because of Brave New World style. You know, where you're in, like, the different sex. You know what I mean? Like, the whole, like, like there's a lot in, like, hey, follow what, b- listen and believe. The listen and believe cult is amazing because there's a lie in that. And I'm going to tell you, right, as soon as you start being yourself, as soon as that little hint of awareness comes into play, they ain't going to want to hang out with you no more. You're going to be right there on the island till I come along and look at you and be like, you thought with your own mind, didn't you? You used common sense, didn't you? Come on, we'll talk for a while. Yeah, at least you got a traveling buddy out of me, and I guess Alan and all the rest. Of course, like at the same time, going into the sixth season of doing this series, it is not just J-Man's time anymore, you know? See, the Jam fam came along, and everybody else that interacts with me is a part of the J360 universe in some way, and the truth is, is like, yeah. Running that down, being the head of a community and all that stuff. But you see, the thing about it is, I never try to impose any of that stuff on them. I, I like people to be who they are. And here's the, here's the funny thing about that. You know, um, like when a lot of y'all get mad at Trumpsters and all that kind of stuff, I'm going to tell you this about Trump people. Trump people are like kids and the elderly. Okay? And some of them are kids and elderly. They tell you what's on their mind. You know what I mean? Like, like they really do tell you what is on their mind. And the thing about it is, when you hear it come out of them, they so convincing and stuff with that. It could be the most foolish crap you've ever heard. But I, I mean, like, this is this is honesty. This is honesty coming from them. And and, the, and it's like it's irony at its fullest. How do you get doses of irony and honesty like that? And then look at him and like, wow, you ain't about a damn thing except that kind of BS. But see, once again, it's a party I don't go to. And not only that, I just look at him like, they're all over the place, man. That is a cult. And you see, the thing about it is, like I said, they tell you exactly what is on their mind. See, like, when, you, when you're in your 30s and 20s and all that jazz, you know, you speak your mind. You speak your point. 
usually when you're by yourself or whatever, like when you're with the homies and all that jazz, chances are you might be the quiet one, or either way, you're still the third person there, because it's usually a group of threes. And, and, like, you know, you have that moment where, like, somebody like, oh, 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 yeah, 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 you know, you agree with it, stuff like that. That's just how it works when it comes to, uh, you know, social relationships and all that jazz. But I'm telling you, <laughs> you don't really tell about any of that stuff. You keep that stuff in. You really do. Because, like, uh, like, for me, myself, you know, I learned how to do it. <laughs> okay. I didn't learn from anybody, but I, I just really, really got tired of it, you know, and I wanted to speak my point, and I always stick to my points, live in my convictions, you know, not entirely set in my ways, but, you know, live in my convictions, but you see, the thing is, is um, certain other people, though, they, they hide it up, they sit right in there, they, they, they muffle right up, like, yeah, Jay, we're going to stand together, and I'll be like, nah, you're going to be the first one that leaves, because you said that nonsense. And usually I was right, because that would be the first person that left as soon as something really, really got hot. Whereas, you know, but like, like if anything else, if it's old people or if it's kids and all that stuff, they stand by what they say now. And they let it all out. Most honest conversation ever. And that's sad, too. And it really is. Trust me when I say it. But yeah, man. <laughs> Oh, we, we could get better. We could do a lot of great things. We still got all that promise right there. Still got the road to recovery about things. But once again, it's all about what you consume, what you dive into, what you're all about, and then don't get swept up in this stuff. I had to go ahead and speak about the, the character of Robin last year. You know? I, I, I had to do that. I had to I had to do a lot of wild stuff doing this series, I'll tell you that. And even when I'm not on mic. So, you know, it's it just to prove a point about decency. Of course, my friend Mike said this a long time ago. He, he looked at me one time when I uh, pretty much had to do a filibuster in the um, in in that retail store's uh, like when I was dealing with my manager at the retail store, like I was in his office. I actually, I actually took the manager to his own office to tell him off. So, you know... And as soon as I came back, Mike asked me this. Did you learn your lesson? <laughs> I said, nope. Not a damn thing. Because, you know, I, I don't see wealth and ignorance like that. And not only that, if I was really about that life, I'd still be working there now. Still getting uh, screwed over by the bottom line. So, yeah. Glad I'm not there anymore. By the way, if he's listening, hey, Michael. Hope you're holding it down over there, man. <laughs> But yeah, so that's, that's once again, as I look at this stuff, man, I see where, where the mileage of ages is, and I see, like, where we all go as a people. Like, I'm very optimistic, though, and I'm still going westward. I don't give a damn about Omicron and all that stuff. I'm still doing what I got to do. I got plans, baby. Not only that, I got a whole bunch of, uh, whole bunch of projects here that need to get made and a couple of different, different things to step up on, and, you know, I'm just nosediving in everything. Yup. You'll see once uh, we start doing some cool stuff for Jammiversary this year. But, yeah, so mm, I just see it all, man. The roadblocks are apparent, but you got to be willing to go ahead and step your game up and get through them. And sometimes you might have to go through them alone. That's just the way it goes sometimes. Oh, man. Well, anyway, last last little tidbit. So somebody asked me how long am I going to be doing the J-Man show for. And I know I said it for level. I like to say, you know what? Tell him about 60. I mean, the odds are in my favor. I mean, like, you know, in about five years, 40 will be here. And chances are, I'm sure, I'll still be doing it up. Just a lot more grayer and ten times more handsome. Oh, yes. <laughs> I'm going to be a sexy old man. <laughs> hey, don't you, don't you know? Aim for greatness. That's what I say. And all that time, I'll still be doing the J-Man show. And to be honest with you, yeah, uh, that'll be in different mediums, too. Why not? We'll just have a good time, you know? Uh-huh. But uh, other than that, though, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode tonight because that's pretty much what I got for right now. I mean, I'm sure there's something on the itinerary I probably didn't cover, but hey, I went off script just like Fosk did. But then again, I don't have a script. <laughs> it's in my mind. Anyway... Well, let's get on out of here. Uh, yeah, speaking of which, is it going to be a Hangouts or a J-Man show tomorrow night? 
Well, I think you guys are in for a treat. You shall see. You'll see at 6 o'clock p.m. Eastern. Oh, wait, wait, one more thing about jams. Yeah, the submissions are open still. Uh, jams 40 is not coming around until next week. The submissions don't end until next Thursday at 5 o'clock p.m. Eastern, okay? So, and if you really need access to, like, the submission form, email me at j 360 com or, like, you know, just let me know, okay? Because I'm on Twitter. Uh, yeah, you can use the at J360Productions on Twitter, or you can use at JMBrady360. Keep in mind, I'm just as crazy as I need to be right now on the JM Brady one. So, yeah, you know what I mean? That's party mode, baby! Other than that, though, this is J-Man signing off. You guys take it easy for me. We will meet up again soon. Peace. Hey guys, it is Ryan. I'm not sure if you know this about me, but I'm a bit of a fun fanatic when I can. I like to work, but I like fun too. It's a thing. And now the truth is out there. I can tell you about my favorite place to have fun. Chumba Casino. They have hundreds of social casino style games to choose from with new games released each week. You can play for free anytime, anywhere and each day brings a new chance to collect daily bonuses. So join me in the fun. Sign up now at ChumbaCasino.com. No purchase necessary. VTW. Void. We're prohibited by law. See terms and conditions. 18 plus.